This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the 2020 edition of the Razer Blade Pro 17. I don't know why they call it Pro 17. There's not a not Pro 17, but anyway, it's a refresh of an existing laptop, but they've done a couple of things. Not surprisingly, we now have Intel 10th generation CPUs, and they're using the higher end Core i7 that is 8 cores and 16 threads, showing that's nice. Also, we have NVIDIA RTX Super Cards, RTX 2080 Super Max Q, as a matter of fact. So the, the Super gets you 10 or 15 percent improvement in performance, and then that kind of offsets the Max q -edness of it. Also, there's a redesigned hinge that allows for more airflow out of the back of the laptop. Very important thing. And as ever, beautiful anodized black aluminum unibody build, the nicest looking gaming laptop on the block with a price tag to match. We're going to look at it now. Ah, there's one more thing that I left out, and that's the fact that we have new display option, which is the 300 hertz refresh rate display. Yes, that's kind of overkill. When are you going to get those frame rates in a game, and do you need 300 frames per second? I don't know, but it's there, and it's pretty amazing, and that's a full HD display. That is matte IPS, and it's non-touch. And for those of you who are content creators or say, look, man, I got all this horsepower in my laptop. I want a game at higher resolution than full HD, especially because we're talking a 17-inch screen. You can take advantage of that. Well, there is the 4K display with wide color gamut, 100% of Adobe RGB. Also calibrated at the factory, and they do a pretty good job. That one's glossy, so you'll get a bit of glare. And it is a touchscreen, too, so that's nice. But wait, there's more. It's 120 hertz refresh rate. So far, when we've seen 4K displays, they are are stuck at 60 hertz. So for those of you who want to have those higher frame rates for games, then 120 hertz is pretty good because you're getting maybe 100, 120 frames in a game and you want to see that maybe. Well, you got it here. So that's nice. That's the option we have. It's not a cheap option though, and this is a non-cheap laptop. You probably know that already. Razor Blade laptops are premium. They are not cheap. You do get a lot for your money, so that helps. But the cheapest model is $2,600. That gets you the full HD 300 hertz display and NVIDIA RTX 2070 graphics. So if you go up and you spend $3,200, then you get the RTX 2080 Max-Q Super Edition. So the faster one, still the 300 hertz full HD display. And our model, which has that RTX 2080 Super Max-Q and the 4K 120 hertz IPS wide gamut display is a uh, makes my eyes bleed $3,800 but it's there for you and if you got the money and the desire for it all of them are going to have the same CPU which is Intel Core i7 8 core 10th generation 45 watt CPU so 8 cores VA go that it's good performer you're looking at equivalent of the Core i9 from the previous generation basically so hard to argue with that you get vapor chamber cooling, same cooling regardless of which SKU you get on this sort of thing. You get 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM supporting XMP. It has two slots, so you can upgrade that yourself. They don't actually offer it pre-upgraded from the factory, but it's very easy to take off the bottom cover on this if you have a Torx screwdriver and put in whatever memory you want. It has two M.2 SSD slots supporting NVMe, and the two more affordable models have a 512 gig NVMe SSD, and the most expensive one that we have has a one terabyte. We have Intel Wi-Fi 6 on board, it's AX201 card, that's a good thing, and we have the usual Razer Chroma per key RGB backlit keyboard, and with the secondary keys now lit, so like your multimedia keys and stuff, you can see those in the dark now. Also, you have stereo speakers, and, you know, it used to be gaming laptops had really good speakers, and not so much anymore. This one has good speakers. Man, they are loud, loud, loud. At 50% volume, they will fill a room, and they're pretty full, too. You get some bass on them, so that's nice for those of you who don't always wear headphones when you game. Speaking of the speakers, if the laptop is so noisy you have to wear headphones anyway, it hardly matters, right? Unless you're watching movies, when still, that's cool to have good speakers. But the good news is here that the cooling is very effective. As before, they're still using four fans. The two major fans that you would use for the CPU and GPU at the rear, that are bigger ones, and two towards the palm rest area to keep the battery cool so it doesn't swell and bulge, and to keep the SSDs cool, and those are smaller fans. And we got that vapor chamber cooling. All of this adds up to a laptop that doesn't get so loud that it drowns out the speakers. This is good for a gaming laptop, especially a thin one where thermals are usually constrained. They have effective cooling here. Happy to see that. And the core temperatures when gaming were also quite good. So they have, it's a pretty easy, simple way of tuning it with the Razer 
software and you can just choose to boost the CPU or the GPU or both. So we did see a difference in fact say Geekbench which is a CPU test. If we ran it and we boosted the CPU the score was noticeably better and really very good class leading for this processor. Likewise we used the GPU boost but not the CPU boost when doing most of our 3D benchmarks. Very effective even if you're using boost on both of those which we did for our gaming tests it doesn't get that loud by gaming laptop standards which means yes you will hear the fans it's a gaming laptop but it's not gonna scream and fill the room the way sorry but the Alienware M17 does. Core temperatures were actually fairly good on this too. Again, impressive because it's slim. So hopefully you are getting what you're paying for here with a good thermal design. So core temperatures on this, really, we didn't see hardly any throttling at all. And I even went and did things like testing Battlefield 5 at 4K resolution, which is a bit daring still for mobile processor and mobile CPU. And it can handle it. Now, if you want 60 frames per second instead of 45 to 50, well, then you're going to drop it to 2K resolution. We ran those tests. Still did great thermals were okay. If you want to just use it for everyday productivity, you'll leave it on the balanced setting and you really won't hear the fans much, so they won't be intrusive. If you're using it for 3D rendering, again, you'll probably boost. It depends on the pack package you're using software, whether you need CPU or GPU-based rendering there, but you'll hear the fans then, but not egregious. In terms of the actual heat, it doesn't get burning hot to the touch. And we're in Texas, and it's getting on summer now, so typically things get toasty here. But well, like I said, the surface temperature, oh, they'll get warm. But they're not going to burn you or anything like that. But it does, it, let me tell you, it radiates heat effectively out of the ventilation system here. It creates a zone of warmth around it is the only way I can describe it. I had this set up in kind of a nook area of the house. And that whole two and a half to three foot zone there, you could feel the warmth from it. So if you live in a northern climate, you're probably like, I could live with that. But... Keep it in mind, especially in the summertime. So yes, it effectively radiates heat, but yes, it radiates heat. When it comes to the display, we have the 4K 120 hertz IPS wide gamut display. And they're not kidding. Our colorimeter measured it at complete Adobe RGB coverage. So this is for content creators. And also just for those of you who really like a really good looking display. It's great if you're watching movies. It's obviously fantastic if you're creating content, especially cinematic content or content for print, which requires the wider gamut. It's joyous. The only thing, it does have glare. It is a glossy display because it's also a touch screen. If you like touch, then that's a good thing. If you like the look of a glossy display and the, the sense of looking in the black looking a little deeper, you'll be happy with that. The 300 hertz display is matte. I like this display just as well as the Gigabyte Aero 17 HDR, which has also the same wide gamut display. But that one is matte and non-touch. So no touch, but matte means no glare. Anyway, it's a really nice looking display. I would love to have this laptop just to enjoy watching movies on this and games really. I saw some details in Far Cry New Dawn in the benchmark scene where you can see the kind of pinkish red characters written on the side of a character's like that I really didn't see before. So there are reasons to have a wide gamut display when playing games too. The keyboard is, well, it's the same as the last generation, which is a great Razer Chroma RGB per key programmable backlighting. Um, the backlighting is a bit less PWM now, which I appreciate because the old keyboard looked to strobe a little bit to me. I, I don't like the keyboard a whole lot. It's not hideous or weird or like a butterfly keyboard, but there's not much travel and tactile feel. It might be anti-ghosting and all that sort of thing, but if you spend a lot of time typing, you're probably not going to adore the keyboard. It's got a Microsoft tr Precision trackpad, and that works just fine. That's good times there. It has a 720p webcam and a Windows Hello IR camera. That's nice to see that we're finding biometrics on Razer laptops. Uh, 720p webcam is, you know, average. Okay, you're not going to use that if you're like a famous Twitcher, are you? You're going to get something better for that. So compared to the high-end competition, I suppose you can look at the Alienware Area 51M, which gets to be equally as expensive. That has a desktop CPU inside, so that's kind of a plus. There's that Gigabyte Aero 17 HDR that we reviewed that I mentioned, too. I like that Gigabyte a lot, actually, and for those of you, again, who prefer a matte display, still wide gamut, it's very nice. I like the keyboard better. It doesn't look as classy as 
the razor blade. It doesn't have that aluminum unibody chic thing going on and looks count for a lot of people, but that's a strong offering too, but equally as expensive pretty much. Uh, with When it comes to Alienware, you know, they have some lessons to learn from razor these days. This razor is very easy to open up, repaste the CPU and GPU if you want, upgrade the internals. With Alienware, they're still putting in extra plastic baffles, supposedly for rigidity inside that just make it so hard to get to some of the stuff that's inside of it. And now Alienware is soldering their RAM in and the casing is kind of boy eraser and looks like plastic and has graphics on it and stuff. I mean, no offense to you folks who like the Alienware look, but this one just kind of says I'm worth that much money when it comes to just looking at it. So I think that's still one of the biggest selling points for razors, honestly, is the looks and the build quality. And they've got it together with the quality control and all that. Battery life on this, it has a 70.5 watt hour battery, comes with a 230 watt charger, regardless of which of the variation models that you pick. And it has an option actually in the Razer software that you can set it to either run always on dedicated graphics, which typically gets you better frame rates for whatever reason, or you can have it on NVIDIA Optimus switchable graphics, so I'll switch to integrated graphics. We run our battery life tests on switchable graphics because duh that's going to have better battery life that's not a super huge battery given the power in this laptop and it's about a five five and a half hour laptop you could push it to six if you're doing really light work that sort of thing it depends on where you set the display brightness especially if you have this 4k display which gets inordinately bright i mean they claim 400 nits for it but we measured it at 478 i mean hmm the ports on this are the same as the last generation, and they're good. You have two Thunderbolt 3 ports. Yes, you can use Razer's eGPU on this, or any eGPU you want, really. Three USB-A 3.2 ports. You've got HDMI 2.0B, Gigabit Ethernet, and a UHS-3 SD card slot. Alrighty, to get inside, it's easy enough. You just have Torx T5 screws. They're all visible. You can see where they are, by the way. You can see how raised the rear rubber stanchion is here or foot so that it gets adequate ventilation hint there don't play games on top of a comforter and strangle the poor thing you can see the fan grills here for the two little fans in the front and the two larger fans here and inside there we go one very large vapor chamber heat sink cooling but it's also very easy to remove you can see the screws here it's not a problem if you want to repaste it you can go ahead and knock yourself out and do that our two fans for the cpu and gpu our SSD, this is a light on brand, one terabyte that we have in ours. You saw the benchmark speeds, they were good. And we have a second slot right over here. So if you want to expand it yourself and add a second drive, you can do that. We have two RAM slots, yay. So 64 gigs of RAM would be the maximum currently available. And you have to upgrade that yourself. Like I said, Razer doesn't sell it up pre-upgraded. And there's the Intel Wi-Fi card socketed so you can upgrade it. The battery, the interesting design where it flanks and is bridged around the fans over here. So these are the two front fans and it helps create an airflow pattern so air goes through the device front to rear. And well, clearly it's pretty effective. So that's the Razer Blades Pro 17, the 2020 model with Intel 10th generation CPUs and the NVIDIA Super Graphics Card option going on. So sure, it is the nicest looking gaming laptop you're going to find in the build quality on this. It's really nice. So this is still the black MacBook Pro for those of you who don't want to use Mac OS and want to have, well, serious game action going on. And also 3D rendering, which isn't so much the strong point of Mac OS as an ecosystem. Uh, it, it is expensive, but you know what? There are competitors out there that cost just as much. Like the Gigabyte Aero, Aero 17 HDR that I mentioned, which is a great laptop, but it's just as expensive. So you get what you pay for, we hope. And in this case, I would say you do. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and hit the notification bell so you know about them.